What is up guys? Today we are going to do an install of Edge's competition kit um, with the EGT sensor and the boost gauge. Um, Cause I don't have either one of those on my truck and I'm currently running um, some max effort tuning. Um, I'm still on stock turbo with 50 overs and industrial 42% CP3. Um, and I actually dynoed it with a boost leak, a slight boost leak, and it made 548. So we're getting pretty pretty up there on the stock turbo. Um, so I'd like to be able to keep an eye on my EGTs, and I want to know about what it's boosting. And I want to see the difference, because I actually ordered, um, I got my new turbo on the way for this truck. We're actually going to be going a little bit um, different than your typical route. I'm going to do an S300 swap on it. I ordered a, uh, a billet S366 SXE turbo for it. It's a... Uh, 66 73 and i think it's a 90 housing i think that's right um so i will be um when i get that kit in um i'll do like a little unboxing video of it as well also i'll do an install and uh you guys will also be able to see the before and after once i get this in we can do a little see what my egts are running uh, see what kind of boost i'm pushing out of stock turbo um, like I said, stock turbo, the only thing down to is wicked wheel, um, all stock piping. It's got a sinister block off kit. So we're going to start by drilling our manifold. I'm going to put mine on the passenger side only because it's easier to, uh, easier to get to the passenger side when I don't have to move as much stuff out of the way. So we're going to drill it with a, let me make sure I got the size for you here. see you need a 2164 drill bit and an eighth inch by 27 mpt thread tap got both of those here a lot of people have questions about hey what about drilling this on my truck what about the metal shavings um and actually they have this little magnet you can get them at the desk of any parts store and it's actually the small enough diameter let me make this out for you Set my phone up here. It's a small enough diameter, as you can see, that it fits just inside the hole. So you'll be able to reach in there. Make sure you use a good one. Um, it doesn't already have a bunch of junk on the end. You can reach inside the hole, get all those little metal shavings out. Um, you don't want those in there, that's for sure. So yeah, got my drill out. We're gonna use some PB blaster for some cutting off because you know that's just what I got around that's how we do it around here so I got my drill I got my drill bit no air filter life all right so we're gonna do we're gonna take make a little mark right there with our punch and we're gonna drill through it. I'll probably go ahead and pull the center fender out so it's out of my way. Um, I'll get back to you guys after we get it drilled when we tap it. All right, guys, as you can see, we got our holes drilled. So we're gonna go ahead, take our little magnet here. And first we'll start by getting all the shavings that are around the hole. As you can see, this magnet does a pretty good job. So I'm gonna wipe that off real quick. Make sure we get it nice and clean. All right, we're gonna stick that in the hole. And we're gonna kinda just fish around. Just kinda fish around this hole a little bit. See what all we can extract out of there. Um, this is not the advice. This is just uh, just a statement I'm going to make. Um, if you don't get it all out, it's not super duper crucial. Um, if one of these little bitty tiny shavings hurts the exhaust turbine on your turbo, chances are your turbo was about to go out anyways. So there's that. As you can see, we got, that's probably, probably all of it, honestly. So yeah, now what we're gonna do, is 
So we are going to clean this off and get our tap out of here. And after we tap it, you know, you'll want to do the same thing. So we got our tap. Um, this is taps a little dirty. I'm going to clean the threads up. And we're going to want to tap it. Um, I'm going to put the phone down, do this with both hands. You're going to make sure that you tap this straight. You don't want to tap it crooked. Keep in mind, these are um, MPT threads, which means they... Let's see if I can focus this. You can kind of tell they slightly get bigger as they go up. You don't need to run this tap all the way flush. If you do that, your sensor is not going to bottom out right. As long as you can get it tapped good, you know, up to about halfway, that'll be perfectly fine. Um, that way, you know, you've got some, some size left over for your sensor to thread into. That way, when it threads in, it'll actually seal off um, with the MPT threads like it was intended to. So, I'm going to put the phone down, get this tapped, and we'll be back. All right, once I get you, you get your tap started, just run it up in there a little bit. Once it starts feeling like it's got some pressure on there, throw it in reverse, back it out a little bit. Let it clean the threads out. Put her back in drive. Run it back up in there. You know, you just want to be careful. You definitely don't want to break a tap off in here. Go a couple turns. Back it back out. Until it starts getting easy again. Um, just do that a couple times. Like I said, you get about halfway up there. Um, your end goal, you just want that to thread in and out pretty good. Just make sure that you got it threaded. You know, you don't want any leaks, like I said. All right, let's get this baby installed. So the way this is gonna work, you can actually go ahead and thread this. This would be a whole lot easier. Here we go, unthread it, throw it on the ground like I did. Be a lot easier if I had a some kind of like body mount or something so I could do this and have two hands. Uh, so what you're gonna do, already got that threaded. I went back after I got it tapped, use my magnet one more time. So we're gonna take this and get it started in there. Oh yeah, just like a warm butter, warm knife through butter. Then we're gonna take our ratchet and we're gonna tighten that up in there. Once we tighten that up in there, take our probe, stick it in there, tighten our nut up, um, position this how we want it. I'll probably have it kind of up like this. Tighten this down, and we'll go we'll have a, a gauge installed. So once we get that done, we'll go on to the routing of the wires. All right, update. Um, everything always takes longer than I anticipate it to. Um, that's why I hate working on my own stuff anymore. Um, we got the EGT probe in, wire plugged in, it's laid over. Uh, put my boost sensor in here, drill type that, put my boost sensor in, got the wires plugged up for it. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get all my wires, I'm gonna go through with zip ties, tidy them up. Um, see, actually, I'll probably do that after I get everything plugged in. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna come over here to this side of the truck. Right over here. It's gonna be a mess for now, but that's okay. Maybe I can set my phone up somewhere. Now, take this right here from my boost sensor, plug it into A on our five volt reference. Okay, that's plugged in. This right here is from our EGT probe. I already got my cap on this end. And the way these plug in, this, this, they go just like, not that way. They go just like this, they plug in. Maybe. There we go. They plug in, put your cap on, twist that down, tightens it. Now, um, let's see what this right here. Now, what we gotta do is. Ta -ta.
on your power cord for your pass, this thing, from your OBD to your pass, there is an empty fitting that plugs into it. It is right here. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this right here and stretch it down. We're gonna undo these wires. Maybe. And we're gonna plug this in and route it into the engine bay through the firewall. These little ties are on here pretty good. All right. So this will go just like this. Can I do it one-handed? I'm not sure. Okay, so it plugs in. Just like so. Plug it in to make sure it's all the way in. There you go. We're latched. All right, so I'm gonna take this, route this through the firewall. Once I get right with the firewall, I'm just gonna pop out, probably run it through right there. We've got some other stuff around there. Once I run it out, I'm gonna take it, I'm just gonna plug into this side. Once that's done, I'm gonna go through a zip ties, tidy this up so it doesn't look like a mouse has been in my engine bay. And then once I get that done, get that tidied up, we'll, we'll re reset our uh, our CTS up with the way we want it with my AGT and my boost gauge up there. Um, so once I get this tidied up, I'll be back and we will set the CTS up. All right, we got everything all buttoned up. So I think I'm gonna put my EGTs here and I'm probably gonna put my boost right here. So we'll start with the EGTs. This thing is kind of finicky. Um, there's times that I don't really, I don't really like it. So uh, let's see. EGT is uh, right here that says how spicy. That way I know how spicy it is. So let's wait on this to load. How spicy? Perfect, perfect. Now we don't need fuel temperature. That's kind of an irrelevant. Uh, gap sauce, that would be my boost. Uh, boost uh, equals gas sauce. Ga gap sauce. So, it's how you know how much. It's gap sauce is flowing that way you know who you can pull up on. Sheesh, half a pound of gap sauce at idle. Let's make sure that's actually in good old PSI. Um, how do I do that? Settings? I don't, I don't know how to do it. Screw it, PSI. I don't know what G is. Close enough. Alright. Now I will uh, start the truck. To uh, see. Make sure everything's working. Clamp it down. 
So yeah, um, you can kind of see these EGTs here. Um, these calibrated power tunes, they do pretty good. I mean, I don't honestly know what EGTs are. I've done a little reading. I think after 1200, it's a little crazy. Um, but just cruising around there, I mean, they're pretty cool, I think. I don't know. You guys can let me know below uh, about what your truck runs if you got a gauge on it. Um, but I will say this boost leak probably makes it a little worse. I've done a I've done a big old tune five six gear pull on my way here. So you know, kind of get an idea because I have no clue how it runs. You know, I've never I've never had a EGT gauge on this truck before and. Like I said, do have it does have 50% uh, over injectors, bigger CP3, and I'm still on stock turbo. So you know, when you get it tuned hot, that's just asking for some EGTs. But once I do the S300 swap, we'll be able to do it before and after. Here's a little baby pull. Uh, you, I don't know if you can hear the boost link through the the camera or not. Um, it's a really, it's a really loud whistle. Honestly, just my luck. No luck, but bad luck around here. So, I'm gonna go get this tightened up, hopefully get the boost leak fixed, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, just feel free to drop them below. Um, anything you'd like to see me do or make a video about, anything of that standard, um, like I said, just drop it below. And uh, I'll see if I can make it happen for you. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you next time.